Hi, Rick Hansen here, back with another episode of Amazing Greats, an opportunity for us to share with you an audio experience with somebody who's got an incredible life story and an amazing Jesus story. And today we're talking with Jonathan Cotton, a Los Angeles voice actor, a pastor, a musician. This guy's got it all. And five children. So here we go with Jonathan Cotton. Well, welcome to Amazing Greats. This is Rick Hansen, along with my special guest today, Jonathan Cotton. Jonathan, great to have you here. Jonathan is a Los Angeles voice actor. He's a pastor. He's a musician and a father of five. Yes. My, that's, that is, that in itself is enough for an Amazing Greats story, right? Because <laughs> Absolutely. it's got to be something. What, what's the age range? Uh, I, I have, uh, twin 17 year old girls and then a 13 year old boy an 11 year old boy and an eight year old girl. She, wow. And do they all live at home still? I'm guessing, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Everybody's 17 at home. year olds haven't left yet. Yeah. Our uh, quiver is full. <laughs> Indeed. Um, so in a nutshell, just describe to me the dynamic of a family with five kids, a, a family of seven, things like how do you fit in the same car? Do you all sit at the same dinner table? Uh, do you have to take out a loan to go to see a Disney movie? Uh, those <laughs> kinds of questions. Right. Yes. All the things. Well, uh, we have an 18 passenger van. Um, that is our primary vehicle. Um, that, and then I have a motorcycle, of course. Um, so like when I go somewhere solo, I can take my bike if it's not raining. And then, uh, we have an 18 passenger van. That's how we get around. That's how we get groceries. That's how we go to the movies. Yeah. So far we haven't had to take out a loan to the go to the movies, but, uh, I can see it. It's getting there. It's getting, it's getting up there. Uh, yeah. we do have a, we have a really big dining table. I mean, it's really big, you know, so it, it fits all of us plus two more. So we can have another small little group to, you know, like a, you know, like a couple can come and join us. If uh, needed. Nice. Well, yeah, that is so, so cool. And yeah. I'm, I'm in awe of that already. So this is going to be a, a great conversation because there's so much more about your story that we want to find out about and uh, give us an opportunity to kind of dig into your, your Christian journey as well. But let's first start with your career story. Your background is really advertising in the in the past. Um, you worked at advertising agencies, one of which uh, was you know a standout in terms of notoriety is your involvement at Amazon. So yes. tell us a little bit about where that was and what what your involvement was. And this is in two thousand eight, so you were kind of at the ground floor, right? I was, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, you know, like I, I went to college and focused actually in college on media arts or look animation. So traditional animation, hand drawn, wow. you know, five foot tall stacks of paper, um, you know, and a lot of us, uh, the, a lot of the kind of the core group that I was a part of, we were always trying to kind of push the boundaries of how we were creating. And so, you know, we were kind of forerunners in some of the new computer technology that was coming out at the time. You know, so we were transitioning from, uh, you know, the kind of camera down page, you know, like take a picture of one page, take a picture of another page, 30, 30 pages per second. Um, you know, we did that. And then we moved into some of the newer computer programs that were coming out, namely Flash, um, which was like this brand new thing. And it revolutionized kind of what we were doing. And so when I found out about that, I just kind of went laterally and started finding out as much as I can about some of these other computer technologies and I ended up, that ended up kind of putting me on the radar of a, of a big advertising agency in Seattle. And I had no, no plan to get into advertising at all. Um, but I, I mean, I had a job, I was working for, I mean, I was doing work for, for Paramount, for Nickelodeon, for, you know, like I was, I was doing animation and illustration work, you know, kind of all over the place. And I got hired from that into an advertising agency as an art director, um, <laughs> Wow. which was, I was way, you know, way out of my depth in a lot of ways. But uh, I, I found that I, you know, I found that I could, you know, really move well in those waters, so to speak. And so I worked really hard to be, you know, to do a good job. And after a few years of doing that, I got on the radar of Amazon and they approached me several times um, in a year. They, they sent me, you know, four or five different kind of entreaties to come in and I spoke with them several times and nothing really fit until finally they reached out and had a project that Jeff 
uh, you know, it was kind of like a pet project for him. And I was one of three people that was hired to essentially to start their or to kickstart their advertising department. Mm. And so, yeah, that was when, you know, Amazon had just stopped selling just books. You know, I think they were selling like toaster ovens or VCRs or something also, you know, like plus VCR. Um, and so it was, it was early on, you know, it was before they really blew up. And you are on first name basis with Jeff because you just referred to him as Jeff. Uh, well, he was his office was down the hall from mine. Serious. You know, so if I didn't shut my office door, then you could hear he has at the time. Uh, I mean, he had this in, enormous, like booming laugh. It was awesome. You know, I mean, it would go travel down the halls. And so, you know, if we were having meetings, we'd have to shut the door. I mean, it was great. Like that's, it was, that was a plus, you know, to have the big boss like laughing like that was great. Yeah. So, um, you know, like I never, I didn't sit down and have like conversations face to face with him that often, but, uh, yeah, you know, he was Jeff. Yeah. And so, and just, I don't want to get off on Jeff too far, but I do want to know, was he, the laughter thing was great insight into what kind of a guy he was, had a great sense of humor, obviously. And also, yeah. was he intense? I mean, was the man focused and intense? I think one of the most intense people I've ever seen before. Mm. I mean, it's certainly, I, I think, beyond genius in, you know, his ideas and the way that he, the way that he fulfilled his ideas, you know? So, I mean, even the thing that he was doing with the team, you know, with me and the other two people that initially came on, um, it will, a lot of the, a lot of the other leadership at the time were in disagreement. Um, but one of the ways that they, that they functioned were that they would try things, you know, like mm -hmm. they would invest in trying something. And then if it didn't work, then they considered that extremely valuable because they would really learn a lot from trying and failing. Yeah. And so, um, you know, like, I don't know what it's like now, but that was how they did so many things back then. So I, I thought that it was, the guy is a genius. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. Great to hear because, you know, as an outsider, you kind of imagine what this kind of legendary guy was like. And now we have a little bit of insight there. So you, so you worked in advertising, you worked at Amazon, and then in 2016, you decided to freelance. Now you, you were probably making good money in a good solid position. And that had to be a big decision. Tell us how that came down. Well, uh, you know, this is where, you know, like my, if I could call it my faith journey interweaves through all of these things. And in 2015, 2014, 2015, um, my wife and I, and, you know, the leadership in the church that we were a part of, we had really been seeking the Lord about some things and uh, as a, as a large group, as a congregation, and then as individuals and my wife, Carrie and I, we, we felt like something was coming that something that the, that the Lord was kind of leading us in a direction. We had no idea what that direction was. We had, we had zero specifics, you know, so we were waiting on him and it, and we, we felt like there was an answer like right around the corner, but it was just not happening or we weren't, we weren't getting it. We, we didn't know if we weren't hearing it or if he wasn't saying it out loud or we didn't, we weren't really sure what was going on. And so it got to a place of, of, um, you know, honestly, real desperation before the Lord, you know, we're like, God, like, we want to hear what you have to say to us. Like, will you speak? And one night, um, we, uh, you know, as we were going to bed, we, you know, we prayed together and I said, you know, God, please forgive the audacity in my saying this, but like we, you know, please speak and if possible speak without riddles, you know, just like, give me, just tell me exactly what you want. I'll, I will do, I promise. And the next day I went to work and I was, I had started at the agency that I was working in. I had started, um, doing scratch reads for, for ads. And, um, you know, they knew I was a musician. And so they said, oh, you're a musician. You probably have a nice voice. Can you come in and sit down? And, you know, if you're familiar with the scratch read, you know, like where it was, you know, the read for a commercial before they would hire the talent to read the commercial. Yeah. And uh, I was doing that a lot. And so the next day I had a really important one. There was like a big, you know, the, there was a big, um, you know, possible contract for the agency and the a, a VP sat in and kind of directed me for the scratch read. And after that was over, this is the day after we had prayed, right? Like we had prayed the evening before so that right after we, I finished the scratch read, this VP 
uh, in the agency came to me and said, and this is like a global agency, by the way, it's a big, the, one of the big three agencies in the world. This guy came to me and he's like, Hey, you know, like, this was great. Like, do you do this professionally? You know, voice work, do you do voice work professionally? I said, no, I don't. He said, well, you really should. I'm like, Oh, thank you. He's like, I'm not, this is not, I'm not complimenting you. I, I think, are you an idiot? Like, why aren't you doing this professionally? I, and I was take, I mean, it was like the stern older uncle kind of talking to this, this man gave to me and that, uh, I went home from that. Uh, so later that afternoon, the president of the agency was walking past my desk and he stopped and said, Hey, did this VP, did he say to you that you should go find out about doing voice work? I said, yeah, yes, sir. He did say that. And he's like, did, did you do it? I said, no. He's like, you stop everything that you were doing and call this number, gave me a phone number of an agent in Seattle. And I called her and through that, I met, you know, this wonderful man, Clem Daniels. And, uh, that it literally kickstarted, you know, my, the process of me going into, into doing voice acting. And so I went home that at the end of that day. And I said to my wife, I was like, you know, I think I got the answer. I think this, I think the answer came and it was clear as the bell. I mean, it hit me upside the head almost. So yeah, no riddles, no riddles. It was just no right riddles. there in front of you. Yep. A lot of clarity. Wow. That is so cool. And you know, Clem Daniels is the producer editor of this podcast. Yeah. A good friend of mine for years. We both were in radio for years. So he and I are, are well connected and that's how I found out about you and then, and then found out about your amazing career. Mm -hmm. um, you have a gift for not only just a, a nice voice for what we would call maybe um, a, a good voice read for a commercial, but you're a character voice actor as well. So you do a variety of characters. And so we're going to take a pause right now. And because uh, Clem uh, said, give me a break in the podcast so that we can drop in his, his, um, his audio reel. So go ahead, Clem, take it away. Uh, hello, is Jonathan Cotton there? One moment, please. Okay, uh, I'm coming. This is Jonathan Cotton. This is Jonathan Cotton. This is Jonathan Cotton. I love Jonathan Cotton. You're beautiful. This is Jonathan Cotton. For thousands of years, the Arctic muskox has relied on the unique characteristics of its fur to survive the unimaginably hostile conditions of the Canadian Arctic. Finally, after years of failure, disappointment, and underfunding, I'm on the precipice of a grand success. Quick, Marsha, my gloves. And if you drink a rosé with a pot roast, two concurrent life sentences with no possibility for parole. During the reign of the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar, a golden image was built, and the king commanded all to bow down and worship it, or else burn in the fiery furnace. Luckily, Amazon's Subscribe and Save program can help you face your fear. With Subscribe and Save, you pick what you want, how many, and how often. So there you have it. <laughs> that is what Jonathan is, sample. is all about. Jonathan Cotton, you are amazing. What is your favorite character uh, to perform? Oh, gosh. You know, there, there are many that I do on a regular basis, but probably the one that, you know, that is a favorite, certainly of my kids, um, was a character that I did several years ago. Um, name it is, it's a dog. His name is Max. And, uh, it was a dog that the squirrel, a squirrel had taught this dog how to, how to text. And so, um, you know, like I did, you know, several, several, many, many episodes of this, you know, this dog, Max communicating with his favorite person, which was his boy. And, um, you know, this, you know, this, so this dog is, uh, I don't know why I picked this voice, you know, like they, the, the producers handed me a stack of scripts and they said, okay, just what do you, you know, we need to get some, you know, when you get some reads in the room, like for mic settings. So give us Max the dog. And I just came out with this, you know, you know, my favorite thing about my boy is he's the best owner in the whole world. I mean, look at him, look at what he does. He's so talented and beautiful and great. And he gives me cake every time I ask for it sometimes, you know? And so this like wild, energetic, crazy. And, uh, you know, like, so like, I thought it was hilarious doing it and, uh, nope, there were no, you know, there was a lot of pauses for, for laughter, you know, in the studio while we would do it. And then my kids love that character. So yeah, that's probably, that definitely stands up as like one of the, 
one of the greats. Is he still alive and well? Is he? Have you used him in anything recently? Well, it's funny, you know, um, Pat Fraley, who is, I mean, just an OG. I mean, the guy is amazing. He has this teaching where he talks about having, you know, having kind of in your pocket as a character actor, having voices and then being able to add or subtract, you know, like for, you know, like when you get into a situation, you need a character. And so I think I have this you know, this kind of standard, you know, what I think of as like a kind of like a, a New Yorker, you know, kind of a, a, you know, a very caricature, very much of a caricature of a New Yorker accent. And that was what I thought of. And then I just kind of pushed that all the way to the edge, all the way to the limit, as far as I, and literally as far as I could go. And, um, you know, so like the, that's, that's how I kind of pulled that out. You know, I just added something to like a baseline character that I kind of have ready to pull out at need. Yeah, that is, that's great. Are you involved in um, any kind of voice instruction at this point with other people or counseling other people or coaching other people at this point? Yeah, I, well, as far as coaching, I probably don't do that. Um, you know, I don't do it as like, I'm a voice coach. A lot of people do come up and ask, you know, and I'm pretty, I have a pretty firm response you know, like when it comes to like, how do I get into, you know, like my mom says I have a great voice or man, I have this great, these great headphones, you know? And so like, but I, I'm pretty firm in that. And so like, I, but I, I do give I th what I think is good advice, um, but I'm not coaching or, you know, per se or teaching. I do have, I have several teachers. I have several coaches that I, I have, you know, I'm, I'm going to school regularly, mm -hmm. um, you know, like always kind of sharpening, you know, what I already have, you know, so turning, you know, latent talent into hopefully deeper sets of skills. So, yeah. And so from scrappy dog to um, Bible reading is a pretty yeah. big jump, uh, but you have done, have you read the whole, have you done voice work on the entire Bible? I have not done the entire Bible. Um, I keep doing more. Um, I mean, continually, like, so I'm continually doing more, but I have not done like a straight read through the whole Bible into my microphone. Let's listen, to what your, let's listen to what your Bible reading sounds like. You do not have because you do not ask. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks it will be opened. This is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. I'm actually working on a project right now where I am, it's the life of Jesus. And so there are, you know, there are individuals in that story. And so I'm, I'm tasked with being some of those, some of the disciples, for example, you know, some of the other, some of the other characters, if you will, in that story. Um, so in those cases that I'm trying to be a character, but when I'm just narrating the voice, most often that I get hired to do is what I think of as my storyteller voice, which is a, um, it is not my natural voice. It is a lower, uh, a slower, a deeper, more raspy uh, a narrator, a storyteller, if you will. And uh, he, he sounds very much like this. Very slow, very calm, very serious at times, but can also laugh if needed. So that's have, my, that's my narrator voice. Yeah. Have you, have you been asked to do um, audio books? Is that something that you have done or are interested in doing? Yes, many. I've done many. Um, and most of them have been uh, most of the ones that I've done have been, uh, have been, you know, religious, you know, like on the, you know, on the Christian side of things, I've done a couple of just, you know, secular fiction books, but it's been mostly, um, Christian fiction or, you know, Bible teaching books, that kind of thing. So yes, yeah, several. Are you familiar with Max McLean? Um, I don't think so. He is a, an actor in New York and, uh, did, has done the entire Bible. Uh, he's got a very, he uses, I don't think it's his normal accent, but he uses an English accent and it's very, um, very biblical sounding. Uh, but I thought maybe you knew him or had heard of him, but he does on the, on the, the Bible app, the new version of Bible app, he does all the reading of the Bible verses there. So 
Okay. Anyway, there and and you and uh, then you also know we talked briefly, but you did know uh, Melissa Disney who was another pod. So Max McLean is one of our podcast guests. Melissa Disney, another voiceover actor, uh, did another of our podcasts, and so you know her, right? Yep, I've had cross paths with her many times um and done done some work with her too. So so I want to know I want to go way back in the back uh, way back machine and talk to you about did you come up in a grow up in a Christian home? I did. In fact, both of my parents were uh were ministers. My my dad was a pastor, so I grew up as a as a preacher's kid. Mm. You know. And uh, and it's and an attentive one too. You know, like I you know, like I, I knew the Bible really well and, um, you know, was very studious, not, I, not necessarily well-behaved, but, uh, <laughs> but I was, I was very studious. So yeah, I grew up in a Christian home. Did you have a moment somewhere along the way, maybe as you matured and got older that you had more of a relationship with Jesus at, at some point? And did that come about in, in an instant or was it a, a growing thing? Yeah, I did. In fact, when I was in my late teens, um, I I ran away. I ran away from home. I ran away from God. I ran away from from all of the things that I that I kind of knew. And I lived for several years as what I refer to now as a professional prodigal. Um, you know, so I I you know I I did all the things, and <clears throat> I never stopped. I never stopped believing in God, uh, or in the God that I that I understood from you know from from growing up. Like I never stopped that. I just stopped. Um, I stopped following the rules as I saw them, and uh, you know. So that and that was a, there were there were years, many years of crisis, a crisis in my faith because while I believed, I knew I was not living at the standard that I felt like I should, and I didn't really know how to get back to that place again. And it was in 1996 that I was. I had kind of hit the bottom and then crashed through the floor of the bottom into like a sub basement of the bottom. And, uh, it was, it was, it was, I was in a very, I was in a very rough place and, um, I had an opportunity to leave where I was living at the time and go to visit my parents. And they, when I was with them, they brought me to, um, you know, like a big Christian men's conference. And, uh, in that place, I, I mean, I could sense really the invitation of the Lord, you know, saying, you know, come, come to me. And I said, no, I said, no, I won't because I've, I've done this many times where I have, I've wanted to return, you know, and what I thought of as returning, uh, I, I want to return, but then I would do that. I would come, you know, draw near and a day or a week or a month. And I would always go right back. I would fall down again. Mm. And so in this moment of calling where it was so clear, it was so beautiful, you know, that I could really sense the Lord like beckoning me to come, come near. I said, you know, like, no, like I, I want to, but I, I, I don't, I don't, I can't, I'm not capable of doing it. And it was a couple of days later that in the middle of the night, um, I had another moment where I felt, you know, kind of the closeness or the presence of the Lord. And, um, you know, his invitation was so strong. And I just said like, God, if you can, I don't know how to do this. So if you can, if you can change me, if you're capable and willing of changing what I see of as brokenness in myself, then I'll do whatever you want. I will, you know, like I'll be yours a hundred percent. And man, some people came alongside me, uh, in the next few weeks and showed me truths about the Lord that I did not know. And, you know, showed me aspects of, of his character and mine that I was not aware of, you know, like I very much had a view of God and my, you know, my relationship with him as being a transactional one. And that, you know, like I give you my good behavior or my good deeds, and then you give me your affection, your love, your mercy, your forgiveness. Um, and I found out, you know, from people just really coming alongside me that that was not, that was incorrect uh, posture before the Lord, that in fact, I was his son and that he wanted to be my father. And so like that changed my life, hmm. radically changed my life, you know, and kind of brought me on this new direction that I'm, you know, brought me to this 
has has ended with me sitting in this dark room. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> it's been a wonderful journey. Uh so <laughs> the uh let's let's go, let's review maybe a couple of others if there are some that you can pinpoint significant moments where God showed up career-wise along the way. So now you're in your career, you've kind of made this dramatic decision to go freelance, to get into voice work. How does that appear today on a day-to-day -day basis? So where where am I at today? Like, what am I doing today? Yes, um, spiritually. Today, I am working full-time as an actor. I mean, full-time, you know, meaning eight to 10 hours, probably a day, you know, depending on how well I manage my, my days. Uh, you know, like I'm working right now on two, um, two nine month long projects, um, that, you know, kind of back to back and one is secular and then one is, um, you know, one is faith-based. Um, and then in addition to that, I'm, you know, doing, I'm working on a, a video game right now. I'm also working with a, uh, a secular, like a meditation app, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of doing regular work with them. Um, and then I have you know, a smattering of other things. And then I just kind of take what I can. And, uh, you know, so I'm trying to manage, I guess, success. I think, especially having moved to Los Angeles, you know, there is definitely a, you know, the entertainment business in Los Angeles is the entertainment Crazy business yeah. in Los Angeles. And, you know, everybody is in the business. You know, almost everyone is either in the business or kind of serving in the business in some way. And I know, I know a lot of, of, of working actors and everybody is hustling, you know, like everybody in the sense that when I say hustle, I mean, you know, everybody's working hard, you know, like everybody's like working hard. Uh, you know, a lot of people are, are Uber are, you know, driving for Uber and they, you know, are extra on this show or they're a lead on this show. Um, so everybody is, is, is working really hard. And I, I certainly have, uh, have pushed into those moments, you know, like where I've worked, I've gone back to my design work at times to support you know, what we're doing, but, you know, but today, uh, you know, in this year, you know, like last year and this year have been at times where we, I'm primarily doing, you know, acting. So. Amazing. Have you ever wanted to act, act on screen camera? I, um, I actually grew up doing not on screen, but on stage. So I grew up with, you know, in theater and doing improv and, mm. and, um, a lot of you know, stand up comedy and things like that. Um, I have, I have considered it and I have been, I have been an, an extra in one, in a couple of things. Uh, and I have considered doing some on screen, but, but really, uh, this is where the Lord has guided us for now. And so this is, this is where I'm putting my, my energies into, I do get requ some requests, but I usually kind of like pass you know, yes. move them to the side, depending on what they are. Let's, let's, I always, uh, this is a question I always ask our guests because it's, it's the other side of all, all of the great things God has done in your life. And then you, everybody I think experiences at one time or another, the unanswered prayer, uh, where is God in this? And do you have a moment in your life that you can share with us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, as I said, you know, we had been, you know, in 2015, 2016, you know, where the Lord would gave us this new direction. Um, you know, like I did not immediately begin to work as a full-time actor at all. Um, in fact, I did one, I did one job. I was a cow in a dairy gold commercial and the studio manager, uh, came up to me after that was over and said, you know, like, you're amazing. You know, you have all these incredible voices that you can do. And, you know, like, I mean, my demo was brand new that Clem had produced. And uh, she's like, you, you know, it's great. It's really great. Um, but you will never find work in Seattle uh, because Seattle really is a commercial. You know, it wasn't mean. It was, you know, she was straight shooting, which I very much appreciated. And uh, so, and I had left my agency not to do this, but because we were pushing into some other things. And and uh, so I had left my full-time job and we didn't really know what we were going to do. I was driving, I was delivering pizzas, you know, I was, uh, I was working at Home Depot in the morning and then in the evening I was delivering pizzas and, you know, asking God, like, God, what in the heck is going on? And, uh, you know, like, I feel like I heard you. Did I hear you? Am I doing what you want me to do? And, uh, you know, and he, and it was 
silence or I knew he was there, but it was quiet. Hmm. You know, so I'm like, okay, well, just keep going. I got to pay the bills. And after about a year ago of that, I got a call from that same studio manager um, with a, I think it was like a 15 month long project where I was in the studio Monday through Friday, um, many hours in the day doing character work like Max the dog, for example. Yeah. You know, so, um, and you know, like that was, I was a very, uh, amateur professional actor at that time, you know, like I didn't really know how anything worked. And so, uh, I think the pay was, my pay was commensurate with, with that. <laughs> and, uh, it wasn't enough to live on. So I was still, still delivering pizzas and still asking questions. And then after uh, a while of that, uh, we felt the Lord leading us to move to Los Angeles and we didn't know anyone in Los Angeles. We didn't know any place. I mean, what we knew about Los Angeles is mostly what the rest of the world knows, which is just what I've seen in TV and movies, Yeah, you know, and I've been to Disneyland, you know? And so, um, but we really felt like that was what we were supposed to do. And, and so we packed up a moving van and drove to LA. I didn't have an address to drive to. Um, I drove to a storage unit. And uh, dropped my wife and kids off in Redding, uh, which is in Northern California. We have some friends and connections there. So they stayed there for a month while I came down to L.A. with my motorcycle and uh, and lived in a or stayed in a in a hostel and tried to find a place to live. And it was very hard, as any person that's tried to live in Los Angeles knows, it is hard to find a place to live. And so all, in all of this, we had this guidance from, we felt like from the Lord, which is, I want you to push into into acting as a career. And, um, you know, and I didn't feel like anything was happening from it. And it was very frustrating and frightening. You know, like there were, um, you know, we finally did find an apartment and I had my wife and kids in this brand new place that we didn't know anyone um, didn't understand what was happening around us. Uh, we didn't have an income. Um, we were, you know, barely, we were like getting eviction notices every month. And, uh, you know, so I'm like, God, what, you know, like, what is it? Just again, tell me, just tell me what you want. And I, you know, like I will do it. And, uh, I finally very accidentally ran into a, like one of the top teachers and uh and directors in town and i was i had been invited to a like kind of a church it was kind of a church setting a church meeting it was was industry only it was invitation only and i got invited and uh you know like during the sermon was which was an excellent sermon by the way the the pastor the preacher that was started talking about uh these two characters in the bible and how they were in their old age and still fighting giants and whatever and to the guy next to me quietly Cause I didn't want to disrupt anything, but I just turned to him and did this kind of, you know, I've been fighting giants in these, in these hills for 45 years, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> quiet. You know, like I wasn't trying to heckle <laughs> and, uh, he laughed quietly. I laughed quietly and the rest of the thing continued. And then after, after it was over in the lobby, I'm just talking with a few people and suddenly into our midst sweeps this important looking person you know i mean just with a suit and he just looks like a a hollywood mogul you know walks in and he comes right up to me and he said were you doing like an old prospector voice during the sermon i said sir i am so sorry like i did not mean to disrupt anything i I, i'm so sorry i hope that that didn't he's like no are you a voice actor yes sir i am he said do you have a card i actually do have a card and he's like give it to me so he took it and then left like that was it he just walked away and uh the next night he called me up and said hey give me your range you know that was it hey this is john give me your range and uh like my range he's like you know what are your voices and so i went from you know from a baby to an old man and all these in-betweens and he's like okay great i'm gonna somebody's gonna reach out to you and um i've been working with them for uh for almost five years now Um, i'm a principal on one of their shows um you know like so i think there i think there is a I think that there is this principle of like the, the Lord calling you to something and then kind of commissioning you for something, you know, that, that the call is not commissioning, you know, it's not like, okay, now I'm supposed to, I'm a full-time this or whatever it is, pastor, voice actor, policeman, whatever. Um, you know, that in between this moment of like, okay, God, I, I will follow you into this thing you called me to, 
I'll push into it with all of my strength, all my heart, all my mind, all my soul. Then there was a period of, of learning, you know, where I was, I was literally learning. I was being coached. I was taking classes. I was doing, you know, $50 jobs, $25 free jobs and uh, not knowing how I was going to pay my rent, you know, and now I'm, you know, praise God. Like now I'm like uh, sometimes turning work away, you know? So, yeah. So I think that really that obedience is like a big key. Yeah. Know? I was going to say, talk about trust and that, and that's, yeah. that's what it's all about, I guess, from what you just described. It's, and I'd, I've never heard it said exactly that way from the calling to the actual, uh, and, and, the, and the time between is the area where trust is critical. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> So, um, just want to touch briefly on before we, and we, we're going to have to go here. It's, this is just a, an amazing, wonderful story, but, uh, you, you're doing some kind of, you're doing a lot, um, in pastoring and connecting with other people in a church kind of setting. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we, so we do go to a, we attend a church, uh, in Pasadena actually, um, but where that's where we go, like our kids are, we're, you know, we're embedded in that church. Um, but then we also have uh, we have a, a dinner or a meal that we host in our home once a month. Um, like I was also a professional cook as a part of my past. And that is something that I'm not a professional cook now, but I have honed that as far as I know. Like <laughs> from what people tell me, it's it's not bad. And yeah. so I, you know, I cook a, as big of a meal as I can. I mean, like a really special dinner, big dinner. And we have, you know, between 20 and 30 people that come every once a month. And uh, we we share a meal together and then I will share an extremely brief, you know, like here's kind of what, here are my thoughts that I just want to share with you. And uh, and then we will we'll have a time where we worship the Lord together where we have, you know, like I, you know, like I'm a musician and there's other musicians that come as well. And so, uh, you know, we'll spend some time worshiping the Lord together. Um, and then in addition to that, my wife and I both have many relationships, several relationships with people that we refer to as our sons and daughters, you know, like they're not from our loins, you know, like they're not our children, but they are sons and daughters to us. And, you know, and we're speaking into their lives on a regular basis, like on a weekly basis. And so, yeah, so we are, you know, we very much have this, um, you know, I know I mentioned this before, but this, we have dug into a, you know, the, the father child dynamic of relationship with God. And that is, you know, what we, receive and how we perceive God and how we perceive ourselves and then how we perceive others as well. And so that, that's something that is a, it's constantly flowing through our lives and through our home. We're going to take a brief break and we're going to have a little interlude of Jonathan, the musician. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for him is wonderful. That is great, Jonathan. And this whole story is just uh, fantastic. And I appreciate your taking the time. What do you what do you see Jonathan Cotton being five years from now, maybe 10 years from now? What what do you envision? Wow. I, I think I have a Bible verse for that, actually. It's uh, we do not yet know what we shall be. Uh, you know, so I, I don't know. I don't know where I'll be. I think I you know, there's another Bible verse that says that we we are unable to ask or even imagine, um, you know, of the things that we, we're not able to even to imagine the things that the Lord has planned for us. And so, you know, we have lived, you know, my wife and I have lived very intentionally and purposely the last 23 years of our lives together. 
um, in the sense that like, God, what is it that you're wanting us to do? Like, what is it that you're speaking to us? We want to hear your voice and be led by you. And he has led, I mean, we never planned. I never had any inkling that I would be where I'm sitting today, you know, 20, you know, 20 plus years ago when he invited me in that field, you know, in the middle of the night, come to me. So I, you know, like, that's a great question. And uh, yeah, I don't know if this is a good answer or not. I don't know. You know, like I'm, I'm pushing into this and I, it seems like there's been favor on it and since, and some success. And so maybe further into this, um, you know, but, but who knows, you know, the Lord knows. Let's leave it at that, Jonathan. Let's leave it at that. I thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I know this is going to uh, reverberate with many of our our audiences, our audience members. And uh, God bless you. God bless the work you're doing and the person you are. And I appreciate your being with us today. Rick, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored that you would have me on your show. Like, thank you so much. And God bless you. Thanks for joining me, Rick Hansen, and our guest, Jonathan Cotton, on this rendition of the podcast, Amazing Greats. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great rest of your year. God bless you. We'll see you next time on Amazing Greats.